Good afternoon, gardeners. It is Saturday, April 25th, and today's video is going to be all about how to fertilize fig trees during the mid-season. Last year, I put together a video all about fertilizing fig trees, and that video that I put together, which I will link to above, was a very comprehensive, all-purpose fertilizing routine that any gardener could use at any time. And because it followed a balanced approach to fertilizing, it will give most people very good results throughout the bulk of the year. However, this year I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm trying to step my game up and go for pure optimization, the perfect fertilizing schedule, which balances the nutrients based on the time of year and the cycle that the fig trees are currently in to provide the best possible results. So right now I'm in the process of creating a series where I optimize my feeding schedule. And this is the second video in that series. So before we can begin our quest for optimization, the first thing we need to discuss is the macronutrient profile of fertilizers because you have to know how to read fertilizer packages before you can proceed. If you want a one size fits all approach, I suggest you check out my other video that I previously linked to. But if you want to optimize your results, this video will be of great use to you. Now before we can go ahead and discuss fertilizing, we have to discuss the basics. We have to know how to read fertilizer packages. And all fertilizer packages are broken into what's called an NPK ratio. Sometimes on fertilizer packages, they are three numbers separated by two dashes, and then sometimes they are broken down by percentages on the box. So you have to check the fertilizer and make sure that you know what you're looking at. It's easy to understand when they're broken down into percentages, but when they're listed as numbers, the first number is N, the second number is P, and the third number is K. And what do they all mean? Well, N stands for nitrogen, and nitrogen macronutrient develops the leaves and greenery of the plant. The more nitrogen you give them, the more effort the plant will put into developing leaves and stems and other green things. The second number, P, stands for phosphorus. Phosphorus is used for the growth of roots and fruits. So on most flowering plants, there are some exceptions, but on most flowering plants, if you give them a high P fertilizer, they will put most of their effort into growing roots and flowers over green growth. Then the third number, K, is potassium. And potassium is responsible for the overall metabolic health of the plant and supports its metabolism and cellular division. Now that we've gone over what the macronutrients need, let's discuss the four things that all plants need to survive. Plants need four things, sunlight, air, food, and water. Sunlight is crucial because that is what drives photosynthesis, which is where the plant takes the natural energy of the sun and converts it into sugars, carbohydrates. Plants do that by sunlight contacting the leaves of the plant. So the leaves of all plants are essentially solar panels that the plants use to attract the sunlight to make their sugars, their fuel. The other thing that plants really need are air, food, and water and they take those things up through their roots. It's true that some plants uh, breathe nitrogen through their leaves as well, but uh, for the sake of this video, uh, the roots are what uptake most of these things. So it is very important that we give plants everything that they need to be successful. If you limit any of these things, a plant will fail and eventually die. If you don't give them sunlight, if you don't give them air, if you don't give them food, if you don't give them water, they will die. So they need all of those four things in ample quantities. So what I find is that people notoriously under-fertilize their plants. So it's very important that we give the plants the proper nutrients that they need to develop. Otherwise, we are literally starving them of their food source. Now that we've discussed how to read a bag of fertilizer and what the macronutrients on the bag mean, let's discuss our fertilizing schedule. Last month, I created a video on how to fertilize your figs in early spring, which I will link to above. And in that fertilizing video, I recommended that when your figs break dormancy and we are all clear of frost and freeze, you focus on giving your figs a high nitrogen fertilizer for the first two fertilizings of the year. And that is a very important thing because when your figs break dormancy, you want your fig trees to put on as much green growth as possible because figs set their main crop on New Year's growth. So the more new growth that you set on your figs, the more available nodes there would be for your fig trees to set fruit. 
you also want your fig trees to pump out a lot of leaves initially so they can start absorbing sunlight and feeding themselves so they can have more solar panels and more energy. However, fertilizing your fig trees like this should not be carried on beyond the first two fertilizings because there is a law of diminishing returns to giving your fig trees high nitrogen fertilizers. When it comes to most flowering plants like figs, tomatoes, peppers, etc., if you give them too much nitrogen for too long, you are telling the fig tree to produce leaves and stems and to forget all about fruiting. Plants can only take so much energy up through the roots, and they have to figure out how to best divide that energy to both grow roots, grow leaves and stems, and set fruits to reproduce. If you keep giving them high nitrogen fertilizer, you're telling them to keep pumping out leaves and stems and to put low priority into root development and fruit development, and that's not what we want. We only want the trees to do that initially to give them a big boost. After those first two fertilizings of the year, we want to move into the mid-season schedule, which is a balanced NPK approach. And when I say balanced NPK, I mean these three numbers or percents, the nitrogen, the phosphorus, and the potassium, should be all about the same number. So a 555 fertilizer, a 101010 fertilizer, a 202020 fertilizer is what you are looking for. Because what you want to do is you want to, after that initial flush of green growth, you want to tell your trees that they need to start backing off and they need to put an equal amount of energy into growing leaves, fruits, and roots. And this mid-season schedule is what you want to follow until you start seeing little figlets being formed. Once the little figlets start being formed, then we will move into the fruiting high phosphorus fertilizing schedule, which we will discuss in a later video. But for the point of this video, this video is going to be your mid-season fertilizing, which will bridge the gap between the initial flush of green growth and taking you all the way until the fruiting cycle, which will probably be about a month or so of your fig's lifespan. Now that you know how to fertilize your trees, let's discuss the different types of fertilizer. In front of me right here, I have two slow-release fertilizers, and to the right of them, I have two water-soluble quick-release fertilizers. First, we'll start with the slow-release fertilizers. The leftmost bag is an all-purpose organic fertilizer with an NPK ratio of 3-4-2. So that's fairly balanced. I consider it balanced as long as the numbers are pretty close together, even if they aren't the exact same number all the way through. So this will do very nicely as an organic all-purpose fertilizer. Next to it is bone meal, and bone meal is a concentrated source of phosphorus and calcium, and that is very important for fruit development, so I always make sure to add bone meal to most of my fruiting vegetables and fruit trees. Figs love bone meal. They also like garden lime as a substitute to bone meal, but I've had such good success with bone meal over garden lime that I'm sticking with this. If you are using slow-release organic fertilizers, it is important to note that they are not immediately bioavailable to the plant. The microbiome that exists in the soil must break it down for the plant. So when you put down these slow-release organic fertilizers, it doesn't immediately feed the tree. It has to be consumed and excreted by the worms, bacteria, beneficial fungi, and all the other living microorganisms in your soil. Soluble fertilizers, on the other hand, are immediately bioavailable. They do not need to be broken down by any kind of microbiome in order for the plant to use it. As soon as you use them, your plants can use those nutrients. When it comes to container figs, I recommend putting two tablespoons of a slow-release organic fertilizer and one tablespoon of bone meal into your containers every 10 to 14 days and then use your fingertips to work it into the top inch of the soil and then water it in very well to moisten it and begin the breakdown process. When it comes to in-ground fig trees, things change a little bit. As you can see, this fertilizer specifically says that it feeds up to two months, right here, feeds up to two months, and I find these claims to be a little bit uh, exaggerated, and I prefer that for an in-ground tree, you more want to fertilize it every four to six weeks. And if you turn around the bag and you read the instructions, You'll see for in-ground fruit trees, it tells you to apply two cups for every 25 square feet. So that will cover roughly one fig tree 
or one fruit tree in general. So every four to six weeks, you should put two cups of this organic all-purpose fertilizer down to your fruit trees. For the bone meal for in-ground fig trees, the directions are a little bit different. Here it specifically says to apply at a rate of 2.25 cups per 25 square feet of fertilizer. So you're going to use roughly about the same two cup measure, but here it says to only apply twice per year, once in early spring and once in late fall. I would argue that when figlets start forming, figs demand a lot of phosphorus. So when you first start seeing the figs form, I would put down another two cups when figlet formation begins to give them a phosphorus boost. So I would use this three times in the year. The use of soluble fertilizers is a little bit more controversial. On the left you will see a bag of miracle Grow water-soluble tomato plant food. Some people have a problem with using uh, chemical fertilizers, particularly the miracle Grow brand. While I understand your concern, be aware that there's nothing poisonous about using a chemical fertilizer. They are derived from natural ingredients. So you're not poisoning your food or anything else by using it. Some people may have ethical problems with the company. However, be aware that if you are growing your figs in containers, containers are unnatural environments and they do not have a thriving microbiome. So if you choose not to give your plants a chemical soluble fertilizer, they will likely not perform very well. If you only feed them organic slow release, they lack that microbiome. They lack all the worms and really powerful fungi to really break down that fertilizer. So if you use a soluble fertilizer, you will see much better growth, vigor, and fruit production. So weigh your options. If you choose not to use a soluble fertilizer, you will get suboptimal results. There are organic soluble fertilizers out there, but they are quite a bit more expensive. I like to use this for convenience, and I don't personally have an ethical problem with the company. To the right, you'll see fish fertilizer. This is completely organic, and it is a great source of trace micronutrients. It is not a very strong soluble fertilizer. As you can see, it's only 511, so the percentage of NPK is fairly low. However, because it's made out of ground-up fermented fish, it is just chock full of trace micronutrients and on, I use this on all of my plants and I always get great results when I add fish emulsion to my routine. While I find that soluble fertilizers are critical to success when growing fruit trees in containers, they're not necessarily required for in-ground trees. If you're planting any kind of fruit tree in ground, you should be working on building your soil, you should be adding organic compost and natural mulch, and over the years creating a wonderful lush brown loam full of earthworms and good beneficial fungi in your soil. So when your fruit trees are young, you may want to use a chemical boost to help get them established, and you probably want to always add granulated organic fertilizer regardless, but as your trees mature and you over time improve your soil, the need for these soluble fertilizers will go away and the tree will start becoming more self-sufficient and sustainable because every year it'll drop its leaves and basically self-mulch. So if you just add wood chips to that every single year, you will usually be in pretty good shape and you won't need these. I'm still using soluble fertilizer on my fig trees because I literally just planted these a month ago. So they still need a boost to get established. But after about a year or two, once I develop my soil, I will no longer need to use soluble fertilizers for my in-ground fig trees, only for the container figs. For the balanced stage of feeding your fruit trees, I recommend using miracle Grow Tomato because it is relatively inexpensive and it's readily available. miracle Grow Tomato has an NPK ratio of 18, 18, 21, which is fairly balanced. The numbers are really close together, and I find this gives great results for the middle stage of a fig tree. When it comes to concentrations, it specifically says to mix one and a half tablespoons per one and a half gallons of water. So that is exactly a ratio of one tablespoon per gallon. My watering cans are one and a half gallons and the, the green scooper that comes with the bag is one and a half tablespoons. So one level scoop of the large end of these into your standard one and a half gallon watering can is exactly what you need. Then to that, I like to add a healthy glug of fish emulsion, probably somewhere around three to four tablespoons. I just eyeball it and I pour in a nice healthy splash. My bestest buddy Dale decided to come help me supervise. Anytime I bring out the fish emulsion, he gets really, really interested. So he will be snoopervising me while I go ahead and I make my cocktail of fertilizer for my fig trees. 
So in front of me here, I have four five-gallon buckets, and I have 34 fig trees total. So when I put fertilizer all the way to the top in all of these buckets, I'm going to have 20 gallons of fertilizer. If I divide that by 34 of my trees, I will be giving each of my fig trees about 0.6 gallons of fertilizer. And that's about what you want to do. You want to give them somewhere between half a gallon and a gallon, depending on about how far along your fig tree is. And that will be using the manufacturer recommended dosage of one tablespoon per gallon concentration. So in each of these five gallon buckets, I am simply going to put in five tablespoons of soluble fertilizer. As well as a healthy glug of fish emulsion. You'll see I'm just going to liberally pour it in, probably about a quarter cup's worth. Here you can see what the bottom of the bucket looks like when I'm done. And then we're just going to fill it up with water. While my buckets are filling up with water, we are going to apply the soluble fertilizer. Now, like I mentioned before, each of these scoopers is one and a half tablespoons. So a rounded scooper is essentially two tablespoons. So each of these buckets is going to get a rounded scooper of slow release fertilizer. And then we are going to take a rounded scoop of the bone meal and we're going to split that evenly between the two buckets. So each bucket will get one tablespoon of that. Then we will simply take our fingers and work it into the soil and we will come back with the soluble fertilizer and pour it on top to wet the soil down to assist in the breakdown process. And now that the slow release fertilizer has been worked into the soil and I have my soluble fertilizer all mixed, I'm going to apply roughly half a gallon per tree. And that is how I fertilize fig trees in the middle of the spring after they've broken dormancy. Remember, I advocate doing this exact schedule about every 10 to 14 days. Me personally, I do this every other weekend, so I adhere to the 14 day requirement and it has worked out very well for me. I will continue fertilizing like this until probably the mid to end of May because in my climate that is roughly when fig trees start pumping out figlets. At that point when the figlets start appearing and the trees want to switch into a fruiting cycle we will switch to a high phosphorus blend of fertilizing to support that fruit growth. So in the middle to end of May keep an eye out for a video where I show you how to fertilize in that manner. Everyone, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you found it helpful, please hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe for future updates and more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the products that I used in this video or in my garden in general, everything that I use is linked in my Amazon storefront in the video description below. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see all of you again on the next video.